Hello. Good morning. Please be seated. So let's uh, welcome one another by looking behind you and uh, give them a nice smile. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yeah, hopefully uh, or eventually we can go around and uh, hug each other, give uh, each other a handshake, and uh, just uh, be normal. <laughs> but uh, nevertheless, we come today, this morning, to praise the Lord. Amen. Are you here to worship the Lord? Are you here to praise God? So we welcome all of you, and of course, we welcome uh, all those people who are joining us via Zoom. To all of you, I might not see your face, but we welcome you. Praise God. The, thank you that uh, you are able to join us in this wonderful, wonderful celebration. This is the Lord's Day. Amen. Um, I, love, I love watching um, the, the National Geographic, especially watching the, animal, the animals in the, in the, in the um, wilderness. And uh, I love to see them, how they, they cope up with the challenging ecology, the challenging environment. Um, I know it's sometimes uh, you see them, it's sad to see when other animals are, 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 are preying on another animal, but it's, this, it's the part of the ecology. And you can see that um, uh, it's a season that uh, always pass through each year in the wilderness wherein there will be drought, there will be a rainy season, and you can see how, uh, how after drought, the life will start back again. So during drought season, uh, of course, um, uh, the animals will go and find the, the water, wherever the water is available. You know, uh, you can see all kinds of animals, the deer, the bison, the elephants, the lions, the, the giraffes are heading towards the same direction where they will find water to drink because water is, the, um, is an essential uh, essential things that we need to survive. And so uh, today, my prayer is that all of us are here because we're longing for something. We're longing for the presence of God. We're longing to hear God's word. We're longing for, 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 for the presence of God. Of course, God's presence in, in, uh, is in us, but then again, coming together as a family of God, hearing the word of God together, it's something that revives us. It's something that enriches us. It's something that encourages us. And so whatever you, reason you have today, I do believe that you, we will be refreshed. We will be refreshed by the word of God. We will be refreshed by his presence. We will be refreshed by the presence of each other as brothers and sisters. Oh, so I would like to read this verse from Psalms 42. And that's why I mentioned to you earlier about the, the, uh, the animals in the wilderness. It says, As the deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Like I said, my prayer is that all of us are longing for the water, longing for the water of the Holy Spirit, longing for the water of the presence of God, longing to hear from God, longing to be in the presence of God in a very special moment like this. Today is the Lord's day, and we will be hearing the word of God. We will be worshiping God in spirit and in truth. And just come together. Let's come together as a family, like a throng of animals panting for the water brook. You know, uh, did you, you know that uh, uh, when you are doing some form of exercises, you are doing a treadmill or elliptical things, what do you have with you? you always make sure you have a bottle of water because after some time of, of exercising, you will be catching for breath. You will be catching for air. And the first thing you want to grab is a bottle of water. And that bottle of water will refresh you, will revive you. And the reason why we are brothers is so that we can be revived, we can be encouraged, we can be refreshed by the word of God as we come together with anticipation, with expectation. Amen? So prepare our hearts this morning as we come together as a family. Father, we come to you this morning. And again, like a deer panted for the water, so our soul longed for you, Jesus, oh God, Lord. We want to hear from you. We want to be refreshed by you. We want to be encouraged by your word, oh God, Lord. 
O oh God, we want to be revived by your presence, by your word, by your spirit, O oh God, as we come together, O oh God, with humility, or with expectation at the same time, O oh God, Lord, asking that the Holy Spirit will indwell us this morning, that your presence will be with us, O oh God, Lord, as always, O oh God, Lord. Lord, inhabit the places of your people as we will open our hearts and mind and soul to, to lift up your name through our singing, O oh God, Lord. Praying, O oh God, that your anointing will flow from heaven to all of us, O oh God, Lord, from all to all of the participants who will be standing in front, Kyla, O oh God, Lord, and Nika, who will be leading us in worship, and my son Daniel, who will be delivering your word. And I pray, O oh God, Lord, that you will, you will inhabit the face of your people. You will touch souls this morning. You will bless us, O oh God, with your presence, with your words, O oh God, not just the people who are present in person, but those people who are zooming in, O oh God, today, O oh God, Lord. Hallelujah. Wherever we may be, O oh God, Lord, our prayer, O oh God, Lord, that, Lord, we will experience you in a very special way. And this is our prayer in your name, O oh God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. So let's just proceed with our announcement this morning. Uh, we have another... Uh, Busy week, beginning on Wednesday with our midweek service. As always, we are extending the invitation to all of you who are available on Wednesday evening. This Wednesday will be March 23rd already. Exhorted will be Brother Jojo. And again, we encourage you to join us. And if you have any prayer requests, please uh, send us your request either to myself, to Sister Rez, or Pastor Mike, and we will definitely include your prayer items in our list. Amen. And, of course, Sunday assignments on March 27, the last Sunday of March. Um, um, my son Daniel will be leading us worship. I will be preaching the, uh, God's word, and Pastor Mike will open us in prayer. And, again, we always extend our thanksgiving and gratitude to all of you who are supporting the ministry to your sacrificial giving, um, your uh, monetary giving, uh, 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 goes a long way as we are continuously supporting the words of God through this ministry by, uh, by reaching out souls, by helping uh, ministries in the Philippines and here locally. Praise the Lord. And so if, if you are, um, if you are uh, giving, of course, as you are aware, there are three ways to give. Uh, using the apps, uh, Tightly apps that you can download in your cell phone or you can still uh, write a check. We have, an usher, we have a box in the usher's table. You can drop it off there, or you can uh, give it to Sister Tess, or, or let her pick up from your place. Again, we appreciate all of you for your support. Let's pray for the offering, and let's also pray for our Sunday school. Father, again, we thank you, and we praise you. We give you glory for your faithfulness upon us. You are unchanging. You're the same yesterday, today, forever. God, you're providing all our needs according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus, O God, Lord. Thank you for your faithfulness, O God, Lord. Thank you for your goodness and grace and mercy towards us, O God, Lord. Lord, thank you that we are able to participate in whatever you do in this ministry to our giving, O God, Lord. Praying, O God, that this money, O God, this uh, offering, O God, will be used only for the furtherance of your kingdom, giving the leaders of riches wisdom on how to, di uh, to dispense the money properly, O God, Lord. Lord, we also live up to our Sunday school, O God, Lord. After we, wor uh, we worship together as a family, dismiss them with your presence, dismiss them with your Holy Spirit, that, Lord, you will teach them, O God, Lord, from your word, O God, through the volunteer teachers and assistant teachers, O God, Lord. O God, we know, O God, that you are preparing the next generation through the Sunday school team, O God, Lord, as you are teaching them from your word, O God, Lord. And Lord, be with us as we worship together, O oh God, Lord, and be with our Sunday school teacher as they go on their room, O oh God, later on. Lord, again, uh, be, be with the preaching of your word through my son Daniel, O oh God, Lord. Hallelujah. And we give you all glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. So let's welcome Kyla and uh, Nika. Good morning. Okay, can we rise and get our hearts ready to praise the Lord?
what's within me feels dry this is my prayer and my hunger and need my god is the god who provides and this is my prayer in the fire in weakness or trial or pain there is a faith proved of more worth than gold so refine me lord through the flame I will bring praise, I will bring praise. No weapon formed against me shall remain. I will rejoice, I will declare. God is my victory and he is here. This is my prayer in the battle. When triumph is still on its way I am a conqueror and co-heir with Christ So firm on his promise I'll stand I will bring praise, I will bring praise No weapon formed against me shall remain I will rejoice, I will declare God is my victory and he is here me shall remain I will rejoice I will declare God is my victory and he is here this is my prayer in the harvest where favor and providence flow I know I feel to be emptied again the seed I received, I will
we are his portion and he is our prize drawn to redemption by the grace in his eyes if grace is an ocean we like an unforeseen kiss and my heart turns violently inside of my chest I don't have the time to maintain these regrets when I think about the way Father, 
thank you for this day and thank you for everything that you have given us. Lord, I pray that we always know how much you love us and that you are always here with us. And I thank you so much. I pray for the rest of the service and whoever is preaching. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Well, good morning once again to all of you. Welcome again to this wonderful, wonderful day of celebration. You know, it's time we hear the word grace. It's time we hear the, uh, when we talk about the grace of God. I always want to go back to God and thank Him for the grace that He has been blessing us with. The unmerited favor of God that is given us. Like what the song said, if grace in us is an ocean, then we are all sinking. Are you not sinking yet? Are you are not sinking yet with the grace from the grace of God? Grace of God is so magnificent, so so uh, great. That encompasses all things about us as God's children. Yes, it is like an ocean, yet we're, we're just like sinking and yet not drowning. John 1.16 tells us that we receive the fullness of God. It means we receive the fullness of God's grace. And after that, He pours out His grace and some more grace and some more grace and some more grace and some more grace. It's an ending grace that He is pouring out upon us. That's how much, how much God loves you and me. Brothers and sisters, let's not forget about that. Let's not forget about the grace of God. Let's always be reminded of how much God loves you and me. I cannot think of any reason why God's love, God loves me except that He wants to love me and he wants to love me, and he wants to love me in the same way that God wants to love all of us. He loves us, and he loves us, and he loves us, and he loves us. That's what the grace of God is all about. Amen? So, praise the Lord. Thank you, um, uh, Leila, Akaila, and Nika for, for uh, that wonderful um, worship that we just had. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And now, with, without further ado, I'm calling my son to deliver his word. Hello. Good morning. How's everyone today? Awesome. Just three people? <laughs> Four people? Amen. Amen. There you go. <laughs> Five people. Let me just get everything ready here and then we can begin. Whew. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. <laughs> uh, good morning, everyone, and thank you for being here. Uh, I want to thank Kyla and Nika for leading us in worship. It's really good. Um, and uh, before we begin, I just have a quick announcement um, b before I start my preaching. Uh, and we'll just play this video real quick um, before we start. There's no sound, so you're going to have to read.
that would have been more exciting with some sound, right? <laughs> but yes, overflow is coming, uh, and it's um, uh, it's it'll be our f the first in-person overflow in over two years, uh, and I think the youth are really excited. There was an option to do uh, in-person or virtual, and we asked the youth what their comfortability was and what they wanted to do, and I think it was pretty unanimous. They wanted to be there in person, so we'll be there in person this year. Um, uh, and early bird pricing is $75, and the early bird pricing ends on March 27th. Uh, so we will be confirming soon with the students. Uh, so if parents, if you haven't heard already, or if you, I'm sure your kids already have told you, uh, just keep that in mind, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask any of the youth leaders, so me, uh, Nika, John, JB, CJ, uh, and we can help you through that. Uh, so just know that it's coming up and we'll be asking for money. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right, so let us begin. So today we'll be reading from Psalm 24. I don't have a, a slide, so you're going to have to listen. This is a test if you're listening. I've, um, so I've named today's teaching The Christian's Story. Um, we're reading from Psalm 24. If you remember a few months ago, I actually preached from a psalm, from Psalm 66, and I talked a little bit about the context and the, um, the history of the usage of the psalms for the people of Israel. Right? We know that poetry is written all over the Bible. Right? Biblical poets use symbolism and metaphors to speak of deeper things. Right? They... Um, and what they, uh, the Psalms do, it invites us into the story to meditate and ponder on the ideas from many different angles, right? And this is the largest poetry book in the Bible. Um, and the, the, what it is, it, it's the Psalms poetically retell the biblical story, right? And then there's a lot of themes, right? We have lament, we have confession, we have praise, um, which are, are all very key things in uh, the Christian walk in the Christian life, right? Um, and what's interesting, uh, and I think I mentioned this last time before, was how the Psalms were used by the uh, the people of Israel. It, it's, a, it's a book that was meant to invite us into the story and in the presence of God, uh, just like how the Jewish temples um, were used. Like it was to come into the presence of God. Uh, when Babylon destroyed the Hebrew temple, you can imagine that the people felt lost without the temple. Where would they come meet God? Um, and the Psalms were used by these exiled uh, Hebrews, right? They were meant to invite them, uh, in they were meant to invite the Israelites into the presence of God like they were in the temple, uh, to lament, to praise God in good times and bad times, right? And I think Psalm 24, what we'll be reading from soon, uh, from soon is a perfect example of this, which is why I called it the biblical story or the Christian story. Um, and when we read through Psalm 24, the, that's what it does. It brings us into the story that God has laid out for us. Um, so let's keep that in mind as we read through Psalm 24. Um, another thing we can take into account, it's written. Um, it's called actually a Psalm of David. So we're gonna, we can assume it's written by David, um, and it was believed that it was written when the Ark of the Covenant first enters Jerusalem during the reign of David. So let's read Psalm 24. Everyone there say amen. All right. Psalm 24, a Psalm of David. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it the world and all who live in it. For he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. Who may, who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or does not swear by a false god. They will receive blessings from the Lord and vindication from God their Savior. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, the God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, your gates, you gates, be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, 
the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, and the King of glory may come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty. He is the King of glory. Amen? Let's pray. Father God, thank you for your word. Thank you uh, for this morning that we can come into the story uh, that you've laid out before us through the psalm. Um, I pray that as we meditate and as we come into this story that you've written for us, uh, may we learn more about who you are. May we learn about more about who we are in you uh, and how we may live that out in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, <clears throat> since the psalm, this psalm specifically puts us in the story, right, of the Bible, there's an actual, it's actually a nice clear outline through this passage. First, it reveals who God is, and then it asks us a question, who can approach God? It gives us the answer, and then it gives us a response, right? Um, so first, the question, who is God, right? Verse one, right away, the earth is the Lord's in all its fullness and all who live in it, right? The earth is the Lord's, everything in it, in all its fullness, the world and all who live in it. What David is saying here is that the Lord is great and sovereign, right? And all powerful, right? Consider uh, David's situation. He's the king of a relatively small nation uh, compared to the neighboring kingdoms. Right, you got Egypt, the Assyrians, and so on, uh, which is considerably bigger than Israel. <clears throat> um, so the people of Israel can definitely feel the looming presence of bigger nations and their culture and their religion and their gods looming over the small nation of Israel. But despite being in the shadows of other powerful neighboring kingdoms, David still could, David can still proclaim that the earth is the Lord's, right? That God is sovereign, not over, not just over Israel, but over all the earth, everyone who lives in it, including the neighboring nations. This is both humbling and empowering because we can say that God is sovereign over all, all things. We don't have to lean on our own strength, but we can lean on the sovereign power of creator God. Amen? Verse 2 David says, for he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. What David is saying here is God is sovereign ruler over all. And we know this because he's the one who established creation in the first place, right? God is creator. Everything that has he has touched is his creation and under his power and rule. The power that sets the stars into place, the power the, that separated the land and the sea, that brought life onto this rock and this floating in space, it's the same power that yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Amen? And that's power, that God is the one who lives in us today. And that's what he's proclaiming here when he says, The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all. And who live in it? For he founded it on the seas and he established on the waters. The God creator, the one true God creator, is the one who rules over everything. Despite our situation, we might, we might feel small compared to our neighboring nations. We can claim that God is bigger. Amen? So then it establishes who God is. And the next, it asks the question, who can reach God? Who can approach God, right? In verse 3, it says, Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? So now we know the power and glory of God. The natural question is, who can approach God, right? And then the actual question is, who can climb this mountain, right? And I think this is referencing Mount Sinai, right, where Moses meets and communes with God. This is where we get the Ten Commandments. This is where we get the Ark of the Covenant, the physical presence of God on earth. And if you remember, the Ark of the Covenant uh, was highly revered in Israel. No one could approach God because we were... <coughs> Wait, where am I? No one could approach God because we are all um, sinful, right? Only the high priests... The one 
uh, only was the, it was only the high priest who could enter the presence of God to mediate between God and the people of Israel. So when David asks, who can climb this mountain? Who can approach God? Who can enter the holy place? The Jewish reader of that time would be like, well, no one. We know that, right? Only the high priest can. Uh, we are not worthy. We can't even approach God's presence of this mountain uh, without a high priest. We need a lamb sacrifice in order to be considered worthy, right? So when when you read when you read this question as the uh, well, when a a, a Jewish reader would read this back in the time, it would be kind of discouraging, right? When they when asked who can approach God, well, not me, right? I definitely can't. Um, but the next couple of verses gives a little bit more hope. Who can approach? Well, it says in verse 4, the one that has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god. I'll address the last two points there, right? The does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god. I'll, I'll address that first. <coughs> right, this brings us back into the story of Moses and Mount Sinai, right? When he, Moses went up the mountain, this is when people were getting restless. Uh, they weren't sure that God could deliver them from the wilderness. They weren't sure that God could deliver on the promise. So they started looking on the outside cultures and religions, and that's where we get the golden calf. This is where the Israelites made a golden calf and worshipped it. And God was not having any of this, right? This one makes sense. God wants us to have no other idols or gods, false gods before him, right? We've established already in the beginning that God is all-powerful and sovereign over all things, a king over all creation, right? Think of your partner, right? Your boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, or wife. Would you want your partner sharing their affections and love with someone else. Should all be saying no, right? <laughs> right. Um, not at all. Like, uh, all the more that God doesn't want our worship and shared with other false gods and idols, right? Now, we may not have golden calves in our world today, but we do have false gods and idols in our world today. Right? What are they, right? We have social media taking our attention. We have world leaders that can be leading us away from God. We have work and friends and family members that might become idols if we put them above God. Right? Basically, anything we put above God or our relationship with Christ is an idol or a false god. Amen? So... And I, as I always say in my prayers, and I think it because of this, I like to say we give God all the glory, honor, and praise, right? When we, when we work, when we drive, when we spend time with our friends, when we spend time with our family members, when we cook, whatever you do, we can say we give all the glory and honor to God in everything that we do. Amen? And how about that first part, the first part of verse 4, right? Only those with clean hands and pure hearts can approach the mountain, can climb the mountain. Is this possible? Right? Is this possible to have clean hands and pure hearts? Remember, we're sinners, and as the Israelites knew, knew and we know that alone we always fall short. Right? By nature, we have dirty hands and impure hearts. So how do we get clean hands and pure hearts? And that's the answers through verses 5 through 6. <clears throat> we can have pure hands and clean, heart, clean hearts because of God's promise for those who seek God. Right? Verse 5 through 6. They will receive blessings from the Lord and vindication from God their Savior. Such is a generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, the God of Jacob. Right? We have to seek God. And specifically, David says, to seek the God of Jacob. Right? We we see we hear that term a lot, God of Jacob. What does that mean? Who is the God of Jacob? Who is Jacob? Well, Jacob is the son of Isaac, right? Who is the son of Abraham, who is considered the father of Israel, right? Uh, and Jacob's children is what becomes the tribes of Israel. So it's it's often said in the Bible, you'll often hear uh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? So when he when when David says the God of Jacob, this is what he's saying the same thing. It's I guess it's just shorter, the God of Jacob. 
well, when David says the God of Jacob, the Jewish readers would immediately think of the covenant that God sets with Abraham, with Isaac, with Jacob. So when David says, seek the God of Jacob, he's, say, he's saying, seek and remember the God of our people. The God of our people set a covenant with Abraham. It started with Abraham. It continued with the, through Jacob, and it's still continuing through us today. We are still in this covenant today, and God has taken us this far, trust in his promise. And as Christians, we have the opportunity to read into this, knowing that the covenant that was set in Abraham is fully fulfilled on the cross through Jesus Christ. Amen? So when David says, seek the God of Jacob, he's saying, seek the God who fulfills his covenants in promise for his children. And how do we seek the God of Jacob today? Well, that means we seek the God of the covenant, which is Jesus Christ. He is the fulfiller of God's promise, promises and his covenant. When we put our faith in Jesus Christ, that's how we seek the God of Jacob. When we accept Jesus in our hearts, that's how we receive the blessings that verse 5 talks about. Verse 5, he says, we will receive blessings from the Lord, vindication or righteousness from God, our Savior. When we accept Jesus Christ, his, right, his righteousness becomes our righteousness. So God no longer sees our dirty hands and impure hearts, but he sees Jesus in us, the one who fulfills the covenant, the one that he set in Abraham all those years ago. Right? That's how we approach God. That's how we can approach God with clean hands and pure hearts, not through our own doings, by seeking the face of God of Jacob, which is completed in Jesus Christ. Amen? Now that we have the blessing of clean hands and pure hearts and righteousness, not by our own doing, but by, through the, by the work of Jesus Christ, the, what is our response to that? Right? Well, that's verses 7 through 10. And we'll read that real quick. Lift up your heads, you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors. The king of glory may come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors. Then the king of glory may come in. Who is he, the king of glory? The Lord almighty. He is the king of glory. Amen. This is clearly, this, this verses 7 through 10, a celebration, right? What I picture here is fanfare of royalty or king coming into the city, into the city gates. That's a celebration, right? The, uh, the king is paraded into the city. We have music playing. Uh, everyone is out on the streets to see the king, right? The kingly imagery, right? We already see it from the beginning. Uh, we're talking about God's sovereignty, and then it, this passage ends with more kingly imagery, right? We get a picture of a king coming into the city gates, right? First David says, look up, right? This is a sign of respect and honor, right? You look up to the one that is above you. Who is the one that is above all? The king of kings and the Lord of lords, amen? He says, open the gates and the king of glory will come in. And we have to open up our gates. We have to welcome the King of Glory into our lives every day, right? This should be our pri prayer and cry every day, right? And it says in Revelation 3.20, Jesus is standing at the door and knocking. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me, right? God is reaching out to us every day. He draws us closer to him every day. All we have to do is answer his call, open our doors and open our gates and welcome him with fanfare and music and celebration. And then it's repeated again. This passage repeats the same thing twice, 9 through 10. Open up you gates for the king of glory is coming in. This is repeated because it's important, right? This is a statement. This is the big idea that David is coming out with. It's like a... It's like a chant, right? Uh, I, th I think of like a, a high school basketball game, right? People, people are yelling, who's the best? We are. Who's going to win? We are, right? It's, it's a chant that gets everyone hyped up, that gets everyone excited for the game and get every, um, uh, to, for morale and to, get to beat, the, the, I guess, the other team. And this is what our chant should be every day, right? Who is the king of glory? 
the strong and the mighty one, the almighty one. Who is the king of glory? The one who started his covenant with Abraham, worked through Isaac and Jacob, and fulfilled that promise through Jesus Christ. Who is the king of glory? The one who fights for you and me. Amen? That's why it's repeated, because it's like a chant. Who's the king of glory? The, mi the almighty one, the mighty one, the one who fights for us. And that's the passage, right? That puts us into the biblical story from beginning to end. Who is God? The creator God, the sovereign one who rules over all. Who can approach God? No one, really. But how can we approach God, the God of Jacob? It's through the completing work of Jesus Christ. And what's our response? We invite God into our city walls every day, cheering and praising his name. Amen? It's fitting that we talk about this passage on Sunday, right? The first day of the week, right? Scholars believe that this psalm was used to read out loud during the first day of the week. Almost like a how to start your week kind of deal, right? I think this is a perfect way to start our week. Remembering the promise, remembering the covenant, and how God is faithful. And by opening our doors at the beginning of the week to let the king of glory in. Amen? Let's pray. Father God, thank you for your word. Thank you that you are a creator, God, that you are sovereign over all. Um, there, there might be some days where we might feel small as um, outside things are looming over us, but we can proclaim that you are ruler over all, you are creator over all, and that you are bigger than all. My God, we're th we thank you that even though by nature we can't approach you, that it's through the completing work of your son, Jesus Christ, that we have been given righteousness to have clean hands and pure hearts, to approach you and to have a relationship with you. And Lord God, this, this morning, the, this Sunday, the first day of the week, we pray that our, we, we open up our gates, Lord God. We open up the gates so that you may enter us, so that you may live in us throughout the week, throughout the month, and that so that you may deserve, so that you get all the glory, honor, and praise in everything that we do. We love you, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Once again, let's give the Lord that clap offering of praise. Hallelujah. Well, um, for the last um, couple of months, we've been talking about who is Jesus, the series. And uh, praise the Lord that um, we've, been, we've been reminded who is Jesus to us, who is Jesus to all of his creation, to all of the church. Uh, Today, my son uh, delivered this message reminding us that indeed Jesus is the king of glory. Amen? He is the king of glory. He is the son of God and he is the son of man. The king of glory is the image of the invisible God. The king of glory is the miracle working God. The king of glory is the alpha and omega, the beginning and the end. The king of glory is the head of the church. The king of glory is the king of kings and lord of lords. The King of Glory is the conquering King. The King of Glory is Emmanuel, and He is with you and is with me. Amen. So let's just continuously be amazed on how God moves in the life of His people. Let's just continuously offer a thanksgiving and adoration of who Jesus is. He is all in all to all of us, brothers and sisters. Without Him, we are nothing. Without Him, we cannot do anything. He's the God of grace. He's the God of mercy. He's the God of hope, the God of peace, the God of love. He's all in all to you and to me. Let's pray. Father God, we once again come to you. 
this morning. And we want to thank you for your presence. We want to thank you for your Holy Spirit who has spoken to us your words of truth to God, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord God, Lord. Reminding us that you're the God of creation, you're God of sovereign, who is control of everything, O oh God, Lord. God, that apart from you, we are nothing. Apart from you, we cannot even approach your throne of grace. We cannot even come near you because we are sinners in your sight. But praise be to God because of your Son, Jesus Christ, who made us righteous, who made us cleansed, who made us redeemed, who made us your children, O oh God, Lord, giving us the freedom to come into your very presence, O oh God, Lord, not because of what we have done, but because of what he has done. Indeed, Lord, you are the king of glory. Oh God, Lord, everything that you do are glorious. Everything about you are glorious, oh God. Your name, your power, your works, your majesty, your sovereignty over our lives, oh God, Lord. And with that, we give you all glory. With that, we give you all the honor. With that, with that we give you all the praise, oh God, Lord. Once again, Lord, we want to thank you for our, my son, Daniel, oh God, whom you have used your mouthpiece today to deliver your word with clarity, with simplicity, and yet with power. We thank you also for using Kyla today, oh God, Lord, as, as a leader to worship you in spirit and in truth, oh God, Lord. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence today, oh God, Lord. Hallelujah, oh God, Lord, your continuous presence, power, provision, protection, and preservation upon our lives, oh God, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord God. And we give you all glory, honor, and praise. Amen, amen. Before I do the uh, closing benediction, I'd like to, to make an announcement. I forgot to add in the announcement that uh, this coming July, which is summer, July 22nd, 23, 24, we will have the church camp. Um, it's been postponed for a couple of years now because of the pandemic, but uh, because of uh, the uh, lifting of many restrictions, I believe it's about time for us to, to gather together in a, a church, uh, in a camp setting. So it will be July 23, 22, 23, 24, it will be Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So if you haven't registered yet, please register yourself. I'm um, calling uh, the young people here. We would like your participation in this camp. Uh, so far, um, there, there are 70 people that can, uh, that can be accommodated in a cabin setting. Cabin, okay? So, uh, so far, there are about 61 people already. There's, there are about nine more left for the cabin. And otherwise, if you're still coming, you will need to bring your tent. Or, or there's an option, there will be sleeping bags available, or you bring your own sleeping bag, you can, uh, you can sleep in a big hallway, okay? In a big hallway, or uh, just uh, maybe you bring your cot or your folding bed, and you can sleep there. But definitely, this, uh, this, um, this camp is a Christian camp uh, exclusively for us. No, you won't see anybody er there. Aside from our church, of course, there's staff who will be cooking for us, who will be uh, serving us breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And so we don't need to, we don't need to do anything, of course, uh, just have, have fun and be ready to receive from the Lord. We will have John Matthew and Kim Goodwin with their children will be uh, our main, uh, main speakers and worship leaders during this camp. So if you haven't registered yet, please register as soon as possible so that you can avail the, the cabin accommodation, okay? And like I said, I'm encouraging all of us, the church, it can accommodate over 100 people, except that it can only accommodate 70 people in the cabin, okay? So please uh, consider these dates, July 22nd, 23rd, 24th, for, for your uh, planning purposes. Amen? So let's all stand together, and of course, let's, Continuously leap up Papa Pranky. Uh, mommy, uh, mommy Kuching is here. Praise God that in spite of uh, what's happening, in spite of the condition of Papa Pranky, she's here to worship God. She's here to lift up the, the name of Jesus. She's here to join us in praising, in praising God. You know, no problem should stop us. No, no uh, sickness, no uh, trials, no, no tribulations should, should, should 
stop us in coming to God and praising Him. And today, let's continue to put our faith together, our faith together in the Lord for a miracle for Papa Franke. He's, he's still in the ICU, fighting for his life. But then again, we always, always trust that God can heal. That everything with God is possible. Amen? He can heal. He can deliver. He can, he can uh, revive people. Trusting that, that uh, Papa Franke, according to God's plan and will, he will be able to recover. Father God, we come to you, God, as one family. Lift it, lifting up to you, Papa Franke, right now is in ICU in the at Milton District Hospital. Lord, we lift his, him up unto you. God. His life is in your hand, O oh God, Lord. You have created him. You have given his life, O oh God, Lord. The Lord take, gives and the Lord takes away, O oh God, Lord. But then again, Lord, we trust also in your unfailing love. O oh God, miracle working God, Lord, you are, O oh God, Lord. We trust in you, O oh God, that you, you will do whatever you will is for Papa Pranke, O oh God, Lord. O oh God, we're pleading for your grace and mercy towards him, asking also for comfort and peace upon the family, especially Mami Kun Ching, their children, grandchildren, O oh God, Lord, son-in-laws, O oh God, Lord, daughter-in-laws, O oh God, Lord. O oh God, Lord Jesus, O oh God, Lord. O oh God, we pray for your grace and mercy towards them, especially in this very difficult time that they are facing right now, O oh God, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah. Lord, again, thank you for today, O oh God, Lord. And we give you all glory and honor and praise for everything that you've done, O oh God, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May the love of the Father, the grace and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. And everyone said, Amen. God bless you all.